Welcome to Business Influencers. Hope everyone is having a great week. My name is Chris Salem, your host. Business Influencer here has been now over two years here with Tal Radio, part of the Touch of Life Foundation. We want to welcome any new listeners that found us here at Tal Radio or through the Touch of Life Foundation. And we also encourage you to follow us on Apple, Spotify, and of course, our YouTube channel, where you can now even see the video side of the show as well. So you get to see not only me, the host, but more importantly, our subject matter experts sharing their words of wisdom and insights to help move your level of influence to the next level for your personal success in business. Today's show is being brought to you today by Global Awakened Events. This event will be taking place in Miami, Florida, February 29th on Hump Day through March 3rd. It will be bringing in thought leaders from around the world that are going to come in to share their insights and personal experiences, how to help you elevate your personal success and your business, no matter what size, to the next level. This will also include a yacht, yes, a yacht mastermind on a beautiful yacht in Miami, and an opportunity to kind of rub elbows with some really well-known people. If this is of interest to you and you'd like to attend, feel free to check out Global Awakened ED events.com. That's global awakened events.com. Well, we got a great show. As I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about how to create client attracting brand. And this is going to be really important for anybody, whether if you're a solopreneur or you are a small business or a small company to a fortune 500 level that listen to our show, you're going to get a lot of great insights. We have the privilege to be here with Kim Speed. She is a brand visibility expert, business mentor, speaker, recipient of the most influential businesswoman in brand development and Amazon bestseller of branding on a shoestring, how to create small business identity and increase sales results in six, in 83 days, or maybe if I'm reading 60, I think it's 83 days or less. During her years in the corporate world, Kim worked in advertising as a creative director for some of the biggest global brands, including Coca-Cola, TD Bank, Ford, and Molson Coors. After leaving the world of advertising, she started her own business, Purple Moon Creative Brand and Marketing Boutique, where she helps budding and building up entrepreneurs courageously step into their own spotlight to create brands that stand out and attract clients. So for those that are solopreneurs and small businesses, this show is for you. And without further ado, we welcome Kim Speed to the show. Kim, how are you doing today? I'm great, Chris. Thanks for having me. Yes, Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you know, when we talk about a client attracting brand and let's say, you know, we have on our, we have listeners here that are solopreneurs. We also have small businesses that listen to the show. What would be some of the things that would, you would create awareness around that maybe that they don't know it's a challenge yet, or maybe they do, but it could be better. What would that well, be Chris- if you could start there? I, I am like, this is my jam. I love talking about this, but I would like to take one step back sure. and just define um, what the meaning of brand really is, because there's so much confusion around it. Um, there's really brand and branding. And I love to define and explain what those are, because um, what people think of when they hear brand, they think of logos and colors and fonts and websites and all um, packaging and all the fun stuff like that. And that is an, um, a really important part of a brand. But really what you need to do before that is create what the brand meaning is. So the logos and the website and all that, that is branding. A brand is everything that you stand for. It's um, how people think of you, how they would describe you when you're not in the room. It's really your reputation. So whether you are a solopreneur or a company, it's really about building the reputation and um, how you are perceived first and foremost, what you want to stand for, the values that you have, then you build the branding. So really, I I always have to clarify that because so many people want to talk right away about, let's do a logo, let's do the fun stuff. You know, that is the fun stuff. And, you know, you get to see things and you get to see things develop instead of actually putting the the work in at the front, which will 
be the part that's actually successful. <laughs> I I 100% agree as as being a business acceleration strategist and, and you and I have talked about this, you know, about prior, you know, when we had prior discussions up, you know, before the show here, it's yeah. you have to have a foundation. It, it's like that in anything, like a foundation to a house. You have, to, yeah. you have to have a foundation to prepare and execute and measure properly to grow your business. And it's like with anything, if you don't have the right message, it, it, it yeah. how did the, your audience doesn't identify to the challenge that, that that they have that you that you will you know you kind of point out and to the results they seek that they don't have. And like you said, all that other stuff is great to support it, but without the brand, it doesn't have any legs to stand on. Yeah. And and so many people are out there and they don't really understand what to do to, to develop a brand. What do, um, what do I need to do to show people that I am a brand? Um, and there's a number of things that you can do. And, and it's really starting off with how do you want people to perceive you? Um, how do you want them to think about what you do? Do they understand what you do? And taking um, a few few moments to actually write out what are the what is it that I do and why and why am I doing it? Correct, correct. What would you recommend now? You know, you you have somebody. You know, we have listeners listening now, and those will be listening later at any time. They can listen to this episode. What would you recommend, you know, what would be that first step with the brand, getting that brand down? What would be some of the parameters you would work with them on, you know, putting down on paper, so to speak? Well, we start off with really what is important to you um, and what um, what are those values that you have that are really inherent to you that make you who you are? Because we all have values that um, are important to us. Sometimes we don't think about them on a regular basis, um, but there are things in life that, um, you know, mean something to us that we would stand up and, you know, take or take a stand on that um, become part of the values in our business as well. So what would we do, um, you know, our, how would we want to be um, talked about? So if, you are um, if you are a company that is a creative company, how do you come across creatively? What are some of those values that you want to thread through your business that come across creatively? And it doesn't have to just be I'm creative. What are some of those other things? Is it that you are a really um you know, funky brand um, that you want to work with edgy people, or are you maybe on the luxury side and, you know, traditional, classic? Um, there's things like that. And I take people through an exercise where we, you know, peel back all the layers and really get into who they are. And um, it's really surprising because a lot of people haven't thought about that. No, so true. So true. Yeah, and it's and it's so important that that you you know you don't bypass that that you take you get you give some ample time because that that strategic part of the the planning process or building that brand first is so important. What would you what would you say would be you know if you have a, a you know a small business solopreneur you know and now they're establishing that message like what what does it take to make build out a brand, Kim? What would that look like? Well. Um, the one side is knowing who you are and what you do and having a message that's clear. But on the other side is having a real understanding of who it is that you serve, who, um, who is your audience? What is their problem? So I'm not talking, you know, I don't want to know right away, you know, their age, their gender and um, the physical being. I want to know Who's out there with specific problems? You know, who's out there losing sleep about, you know, um, you know their finances or um, who's trying to keep their job or, you know, what is things that are keeping people up that you solve a problem for? Um, that is really important. So and then I also say a lot of people don't go and spend enough time talking to people to find out what the problem really is. So this is a big part of it. You know, you can't just 
go and start making this stuff up. You really got to uh, research and talk to people. And that is one of the first things that I say to people. We've got to go out and start talking to people, people that you think could be in um, a client or a patient or um, a business partner. Who are these people and have conversations with them and talk about what's going on? What what are you um, what challenges do you have? And it's amazing what you find. Yeah. So really knowing your audience. Knowing your audience is so true. And when you know your audience, it, it's can you like it, you know, your audience is, you know, you're going to know that maybe what their values are on some level, how they align with yours. What would be some of the things knowing your audience? Like what would be some of the areas that that they should look for, you know, because the, the way to start really building out their brand to align with what's important to them. Well, and back to the whole, you know, the problem thing, there's um, nobody's looking for you if they don't have a problem. Nobody's buying unless they're trying to solve something. So going out and finding out, you know, thinking about what you, you provide and turning that into what is the solution that I'm providing somebody and defining that problem um, and then actually looking for the groups of people that have that and, and then starting to narrow that down. Okay. There are people that, you know, they need marketing. There's people out there that need marketing. There's lots of people out there that need marketing, but who are the people that I can help? Um, who are the people that I want to help? Um, are they big, huge corporate? corporations or are they smaller or midsize um you know what kind of um product or service do they provide answer some of these questions and a lot will be, be revealed yeah no so true so when when they build it when they get their brand and, and they get that established getting that moved in the right direction then all the things that are necessary to kind of get it out there and make that connection i mean there could be different platforms what would that process look like that you advise them, you know, with that process or where the, where now the branding comes in? So once we, um, you know, do some of this, what I call the back end, the foundation, um, we figure out how they want to be perceived. What is their persona? You know, who we start to look at things like, you know, if you were um, represented by somebody famous, if they could be your spoke spokesperson, who would they be? So starting to reveal the personality of your brand, uh, we can then start to build on that and, and dress it up to represent that, um, that persona. Give it a voice, give it a look. Um, but it's amazing uh, when I've worked with a few people that... You know, they thought they've come to me and they had it all figured out. They just need a refresh. And we've actually, you know, taken back um, the layers. We've opened the curtains behind the back door <laughs> and seen the wizard back there and realized that they don't have all the answers. I worked with a company, an HR company, a small HR company, and they were, they came from corporate, two partners, they came out and they thought that, um, they knew exactly who their audience was. They were coming from corporate and they were coming out to work with small business owners that didn't have HR departments and they were going to need them. These are the people that they could help. And yeah, they were the people that they could help. That was going to be great, except those people didn't know they needed them. So it was an uphill battle all the time, a struggle because they were convincing people that they needed them and it, it was too much work. Those people, they didn't actually want HR help, but the people, when after we did some surveys and, and some research, we re realized that there's some more medium-sized companies that have small HR departments that are overworked, overwhelmed, that needed services um, added into what they did to help them and um, grow and, and benefit and be successful. And they were able to put packages together for those types of company. And their company grew from two partners to like a team of 10 people that all worked remotely. And it was 
all because they took the time to step back and figure out who they were and who they could help. Yeah. Wow. That's fabulous. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's a process for sure. And no doubt. And when, when you recommend working with small businesses, they, they got to see this at like, a, as I, like what you had described as a process. It's not something that happens overnight. These mm-hmm. things can take time. And it, I guess it depends upon the type, you know, the, the type of business you're in, the audience you're serving, the problems or the challenges that you're helping them to make better or overcome. And then the results that they're seeking that how they get it. Not all those things happen immediately. Sometimes it can, some can take longer. What do you, what do you kind of do? What do, what do you recommend to businesses that, you know, when they, when they look at this, you know, it, this isn't like something that happens overnight, but it's a process, but seeing it through is going to really set them apart from their, the, the, their other people in their business. Yeah. Um, well, first start uh, starting, um, you know, to actually think about this is um, a big step because there's a lot of people that, you know, they're, everybody's busy and you don't have time for this. They, they think if I don't get immediate ROI, if this isn't a sale, then I'm not spending time on it where they don't realize that if they actually put the time in, it's going to evolve into sales. And, um, you know, when we, take the time to figure out who we are, then we can actually start to create the messaging and the conversations that you'll have. How how will you introduce yourself? How will you talk about yourself in um, on your website? This is so key. So one of the next steps that we do in our branding is we start to create you know, the look and, and feel of the brand and does it need to be refreshed? How do we represent you on line where on your home your website your home area if you're not clear there about who you are then you're confusing everybody so we start to really develop that home area so that when people arrive they get a sense right away of who you are and if you are the right type of um, company for them yeah no absolutely no i love that love that and what would be some other things that you could share, like, you know, when, you know, when you get tracked, you know, you know, the, your, the audience that you're looking to bring in, you, you, you know, you talked about the brand, you've been talking about branding. What would be some other things that you find, you know, that are like work really well with branding, you know, in terms of, and I guess that can come in many different ways, website to email marketing, there could be a wide variety of different things, but is there any kind of like, like sequence or certain types of uh, platforms that you feel work best for that? Um, well, in my um, my uh, Speedway format, when I do branding, the first thing that we look at, obviously, is um, uh, after we do the, the brand and the branding is now we have to get out there and get visible. So how are we, you know, what are we going to use to turn on the, the spotlight onto us and get people to start um, knowing who we are. So we use um, social media. So uh, we get into social media, we get into um, presentations, you know, partnerships, who are we connecting with? It's really about making, you know, who are the, the people that are going to be able to support us and how are we going to support them? Is there some sort of connection there between partners um, that are going to help us become visible and then getting engaged with our audience, how, you know, taking our brand, our messaging and being able to engage with people is key. So visibility engagement, and then how do we turn them into leads? You know, how do we get them to say, I'm interested in lean in, give you an email, give you a way to start building that relationship. And then, of course, once you get them into that and then you you convert them into a, say, a client, a patient, um, something like that, then what we need to do is make sure that you have a brand experience that delights and surprises them. Um, so we work on that as well. Well, yeah, I love, I love how you finish that up with the experience, because if when a client has an experience, they're going to definitely not. Well, not only they, if they're going to relate it to their exp- own experience. That's what they're experiencing. But it's really now like how that now it identifies with that brand. They're going to remember that. 
Yeah, it's a huge part of the brand. It's the actual experience. People think it stops once you make a you turn somebody into a client. No, no, it's just beginning. You have to be able to give them um, something that they first off expect. And then, you know, how are you making it so that you stand out, that they remember you and they, they return? You want loyal, raving fans. They're the ones then that start to talk you up and tell you, tell other people. Yeah. 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 So true. And, it, and I, when I was going to ask you with the, you know, the experience it's with the experience. I mean, that's what creates retention. And then through that, that experience, it also leads to that. And this is always the greatest way to grow a business is through referrals. So they're going to refer you. Yeah. That's a, that's a testament of your brand that your brand is, is, and again, those values that you talked about that kind of define they're like, they're, they're part of that foundation. Yes, exactly. What we are trying to do in our ecosystem is get our message out, um, get visible, engage, attract, and make an experience so that we are building those uh, loyal, raving fans. They're going to be more important to you than any marketing that you could ever pay for. And these people are working for you for free because they're out there and they love you. That's why experience is so important. And, and um, another thing that I always love to talk about too is um, what kind of partners are you creating along the way? You know, the people that aren't necessarily your clients, but maybe they're suppliers, maybe they're um, people that uh, companies that you buy services from or um, people that uh, have your audience that could supply um, uh bring you leads how are you treating them because they're just as important to you as potential clients so true so true and that's great and and anything else that you know that we, you know when it talk when it comes to this process of client attracting uh, how to create a client attractive brand what else did it, that you can you share that kind of like really brings everything you've shared so far full circle so I also like to, um, you know, if we're thinking about we've got them, got people in as clients and um, customers, you know, and we're building on that experience. What is um, the next step for them? What? How are you building your brand that you're providing more value to them? So it's that ascension model. So you get them in, um, get people into your world. Maybe it's some sort of pre-offer. Maybe it's a webinar, you know, um, demo, anything that gets them into your world through being visible. How are you then getting them into becoming a client, giving them that experience? And then what's the next step? Is there something that you can do to make their life even better? Always continue to think about how you can add value to them. Because you're going to get more out of the people that already love you than you are, you know, trying to go back to the beginning and starting all over again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> totally makes so sense. So it really is. It's it's really an ecosystem. A brand is an ecosystem. And we have to think of all of the parts because they all work together. And I also want to say, Chris, um, it's not a one and done. Your brand evolves over time, just like you grow and change. So does your brand. So it's something that you need to continually think about. Um, yeah. And, would that, would that mean that sometimes like, yeah, it's going to stay the same, but there could be some times where maybe it's not that you revamp it, but there could be cases where that can happen. You know, there could be a change in the industry or change with yourself. I mean, God forbid something, but, but again, you know, it's, it's, it's always a, uh, it's always a progress in motion. It's not something that, you know, that like it's not fixed. It, it can, it's, it's constantly evolving. Yes. You know what? Everything, our environments change. We've been, we've seen it. We've seen a huge shift in how uh, we work and the things that um, consumers are looking for over the last few years. It's been a huge shift. This is a, a great example of, you know, people working from home and how, I mean, that was so taboo before. When I started my business, we didn't talk about that we worked from a home office. 
we tried to cover that up. Now everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'm in my pajamas and slippers. <laughs> yeah. So, um, people's needs change. So that may mean that, you know, um, Chris, you work with people on their business and their business might evolve, which means that their brand also may have slightly different messaging, or maybe they're going after a different audience. And all of this is great, but you have to make sure that the messaging is changing along. The brand is um, coming along. And it doesn't mean that it has to have a completely new look. It just means you have to think about it. Yeah, I like I love what you just said because the brand, like the messaging, if it if it was working at you know at, at a certain point, now it th- things have changed in your industry or with your audience. You can't just assume that that same message is going to work now. It, it's got to adapt. Yeah, to what what and, what's happening? And are people looking at it and understanding that you're speaking to them? You want that? Let's face it, we don't have a lot of time. You want people to. If they're landing on um, a website or if they see a, a post in, um, you know, on LinkedIn or Facebook or wherever they are, are they quickly saying, oh, yeah, I want to read more about that? Or are they just passing by? We, you know, we don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so true. And that's some great information you're sharing here. And and I know as we get down near, near the end of the show, is there anything like you could share like briefly for like a minute, like where you, you saw like maybe a past client of yours, you don't obviously have to mention the name or anything like that, but just something where that they made that change. Like you saw where they started and they had to make that shift so that people listening can understand that they don't have to like just get fixated on one thing for the rest of their, their career in that business. Well, um, I actually worked with an interior um, designer and interestingly enough, it, interestingly enough she had uh, a great referral source and she never really had to market herself she worked with um, a partner that brought her a lot of business well a couple of partners but the one that brought her a lot of regular business they they closed their business they retired and um, she was devastated because that was always a great resource for her for people coming in So all of a sudden she came to me and she goes, I now don't know what to do because I haven't had to work at this and I need to figure it out. So um, when we worked together, um, we we did a whole um, session where we figured out who she was and she was really struggling with new people coming in that um, weren't referred to her through those people anymore. She was having to really spend a lot of time educating them on what... um, she did. And we realized there's, there's people that were coming in that were maybe looking for a decorator, not a designer. And she was coming across yeah. as a decorator. So we had to revamp everything she did and, and her look so that people understood she was a designer. She could work with contractors. She knew about, um, you know, building codes and things like that. She wasn't coming in just to do colors and furniture. Got and it. when we changed all that, everything changed for her and it became so much easier. No, that's fabulous. Thank you for sharing that. And I know we're, we're getting near the end of the show. And I want to make sure that, first of all, I want to thank you for sharing this insight today that was highly valuable to the listeners and those listening later. I want to thank you personally and everybody here at, at, at Tal Radio and Touch of Life Foundation. How can everyone listening and those listening later get to you know know you, reach out to you, Anything that what anything that you're up to or anything that you'd like to provide them? Well, I would love people to be able to go um, check out my website. It's purplemooncreative.com. Um, and I'm also on LinkedIn um, as uh, Kim Speed. And I am on um, Instagram and on Facebook. I'm on it all. <laughs> and you can get all of that through my, my website, Um, so I would love, uh, if anybody's interested, please connect with me. Uh, you can reach me at kspeed at purplemooncreative.com. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Kim, again. Thank you for being here and taking time out of your busy schedule. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. It's our pleasure. And listeners, we want to thank you each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers with Tile Radio, part of the Touch of Life Foundation. 
If there is anything that was shared to here today that resonated with you, feel free to re reach out definitely to Kim Speed Direct. If you reach out to us, we'll make sure to connect you with her as well. And again, if there is any subject matter content that you would like to see on a future show, let us know and reach out to us at Chris at ChristopherSalem.com. We want to wish everyone a great rest of your week, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.